Lord, please allow me to share this testimony clearly and concisely. And please, Lord, just use the, the Holy Spirit to talk through me and, and share this message. I know that you want to uh, get this message out there. So please just help me to deliver it clearly and tell everyone what you want them to hear. In your name I pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. All right. So my name is Nate Stafford, and this is my testimony for how Jesus Christ saved my life. And... I am absolutely certain that God is real now. I used to be a non-believer. I used to not believe in really anything. I kind of made up my own religion in my head. Um, but this is the story of my life and how I turned against God uh, basically my entire life up until this point. And what a dramatic change it has been to come to believe in the Lord, how I came to believe in the Lord. And... Um, why I am so certain that this is the one truth to this life. All right, so a little bit of backstory. Um, basically, I'm 29 years old right now, and I was born in San Diego, California, and we had a family of four. It was me, my sister, who is three and a half years older than me, uh, my mom, and my dad. Now, when I was four years old, we moved out of California and we moved to the East Coast. We moved to um, Pennsylvania first. And then uh, when I was like seven or eight, we moved to New Hampshire. And then we moved to like two different places in New Hampshire. And growing up, uh, you know, I don't know, like it's not like some huge terrible thing, but I never felt like, you know, Every time I started to like make new friends in school and stuff like that, like we kind of packed up and, and, and left. And, you know, as kids, we, we didn't really understand why we were moving around. But later on in life, uh, you know, we found out why we were moving around so much. And um, my dad was kind of a secret drug addict and he was a doctor, but he did drugs and he kept getting fired from his job from doing cocaine. Besides that though, we had a we had a good family, you know. It, it was a good childhood. Uh, you know, I, I can't complain much about that. And then finally, when I was twelve, we moved back to California, and that's when things started get a lot harder. So, first of all, my dad moved out to California first, and he was looking for a job, and he was also, you know, trying to find a house that we could buy. So he was in California for like three months. The rest of you know, the family was still in New Hampshire. We hadn't moved yet. It was just him living in California. Anyways, in this time when he was living in California, he was unfaithful to my mom. And we didn't know this at the time. She didn't know this at the time. But um, we moved to California. We got a house. Um, and maybe within a year or two years, uh, my parents decided to get separated. So they got a divorce. Then shortly after that, Basically, my dad gets cancer, and within maybe a month, two weeks to a month after telling us that he has cancer, um, he dies. And it was super traumatic, super hard for the whole family. I was in seventh grade at the time. I was in middle school. And my sister was a freshman in high school, I believe. So basically, as soon as that happened, it just, it sucked, you know, it totally sucked. And, um, on top of that, you know, I kind of felt like I lost everyone because my dad died. It was traumatic. My sister was in high school. So she went down this dark path of doing drugs. Um, you know, hardcore, like the worst of the worst. She got hooked on meth, uh, for years and years. And it was just like totally lost her. She, you know, completely lost her mind for a bit. And praise the Lord, praise the Lord. She's good now, she's on a good path. But um, that was reality for a while. And then through all this, you know, my mom had to, my dad didn't, 
he kind of knew he was, it seemed like he knew he was on his way out. It seems like, seemed like he knew he was sick and he was gonna die soon, so he racked up his credit cards. He didn't leave us, you know, too much inheritance or, you know, anything like that. So my mom, uh, they couldn't afford the house, or she couldn't afford the house anymore. So she had to sell the house, get a new house, and oh God, bless my mom's soul. She's such a good woman. I'm so, so grateful that I had her through this, but she had to start working, you know, a second job, a third job, and she was working like 70 hours a week. And um, so I kind of felt like I just lost everyone at once. So anyways, that's a little bit of background. And then from that point forward, my way of coping through this was, first of all, I, I thought that if there was any sort of God um, how would this ever happen? So I completely resented the idea of any sort of God. Basically, I turned into like just a totally like out of control kid where I was basically anything anyone told me to do, I literally would do the exact opposite. I um, got into a lot of trouble with teachers then I got in trouble with the police as I got older. Then I got into high school and got into partying myself. And it's crazy because the world literally glorifies sin. So if you're drinking, smoking, having sex, partying, you're cool. You become the cool kid. So that was my life for a while. And I just didn't care. Like, I, I really, like, I was just like, what is the point of any of this? I didn't find a point in it. And... You know, I, I, I had a much better time just like partying and smoking a bunch of weed with my friends. But then, you know, I kind of got to this place where it's just like, man, I've really had to fend for myself uh, for a lot of years and I've been through a lot of tough stuff. And like, life is hard, but it's, it's up to me to make it better. So I had this, I don't know, like small realization where it's just like, man, life is literally gonna suck unless I do something about it. So then I became just like absolutely obsessed about like, how do I get rich? I need money that, you know, this world it's, it's run by money. And if I have more money, then I can have more things and freedom. And, you know, I can help my mom and she won't have to work so much and like all these things. And I was just like, all right, that's my purpose. So that was, you know, the first time that I kind of found like a meaning to life was just like, I'm going to chase these dreams and I'm gonna be an entrepreneur. And I literally did that for like, I've been doing that for like the last 10 years. Anyways, I wasn't getting in as much, you know, trouble anymore. Ah, no, I still was. This is hard to share this stuff, guys. Man, I'm trying. I, <laughs> I hope you can be patient with me. I'm trying my best to get this message out there, okay? Where was I? So, does it even matter? Like, do you guys even need to hear, like, this story? I was a royal piece of beep, okay? I just, I was filled with pride. My ego was huge. Even though I pretended like I had zero ego, like, deep down, my ego was huge. And I tried to fill my I had this hole in my heart, you know, because I had so much pain from being, you know, just growing up the way that I did. And I tried to fill the hole in my heart with everything of this world, money, sex, partying, porn, drugs, alcohol, everything, everything you can think of. I've tried it and it never truly filled you up. It's, it's all short term, short term fixes to a bigger problem. And, and still, I, I wanted nothing to do with God. I thought Christians were, you know, I, I thought people who followed religion or whatever, like, were weak. You know, I was just like, dude, they're just trying to find meaning in this life. And like, they're just not tough enough to handle it. Like, I thought I was so righteous because I was so tough and I had been through hard times and I didn't need a God. Like, ugh, how I was so wrong for so many years. Anyways, my best bud at the time, I met his older sister and um, we met each other and kind of just like fell in love. Like we were just like, let's do life together, you know? And we move in together, live in California for a year. 
And I had a bunch of friends that just like, my friend group wasn't the greatest. And over the years, I slowly started like improving my friend group, but like all we did was like party and stuff together. And like, it wasn't, it wasn't good at all. Um, so we dated for a year and then we're like, you know, we had this opportunity to move up to Oregon. And I was just like, I visited one time. I thought it was an awesome place. I was just hooked. I was like, let's do this. Let's move to Oregon. And I really wanted to get away from like all the people I grew up with. I just wanted to start a new life. Just go up to Oregon, start a new life. Anyways, moved to Oregon. It was great for the first couple of years, but then year three, four, five, you know, honeymoon phase kind of wears off and we start getting into these fights and like, I wish I knew better. You know, one thing that I had growing up was a dad who had a short temper and you know, he was never, never physically abusive, but verbally abuse, abusive. And it was scary when he would yell. And I did the same thing. I would raise my voice when I, when I was trying to get a point across and I wasn't being heard. I would get so irritated and angry and um, I would raise my voice and just start yelling. And I hated it. I hated that about myself. I remember having that growing up. I, rem I hated that about myself. And so, you know, thinking about marriage, thinking about kids one day, like, I was like, I need to figure this out before I'm ever comfortable with like having kids or getting married or whatever. Like, I just, I can't do it. Anyways, I was never able to figure that out myself. And, you know, I literally just like, my God was making money and doing business and making money. And that's all I cared about. I put it in front of everything else. And I justified it by saying, well, this is going to give me a better future. And it's going to give my girlfriend and future wife a better future and my kids a better future and my mom and my sister and everyone's going to have a better life and a better future if I just make a bunch of money. So that was my thing. That was my number one priority. It was business, then my girlfriend and family. And, but, but it was selfish. It you know, like I would say, I would say that it was for everyone else and it was like, I cared about everyone else, but it was also very selfish. It was like, for me, like I, I didn't care about other people in the world outside of like my close people. Anyways, did that for a long time, ha started having relationship troubles, started getting these, these fights. I was, you know, lusting over other women and checking out other women. Like it was just, ugh. I just, everything that I had, I always got used to it every good thing I had in my life, I always got uh, used to it and would start taking it for granted. I took everything for granted. And I had, on the outside, I had it all. I had the girl, I had a dog, I had a life. We, we had a future, we were, we were building everything together. We were gonna build these very successful businesses. We were gonna get into real estate and fix and flip homes and do all these things. So outwardly, I would always look like I'm in a good place and, um, I would pretend like I didn't care what other people thought about me, but I did care what other people thought about me. And I wanted to prove all, you know, I had bullies growing up and stuff like that. And I just wanted to prove everyone wrong. You know, no one ever like believed I was going to become anything. And I just wanted to just completely prove everyone wrong. And that was like my goal of life. And I'm sorry, I, I, I'm trying my best here. I keep losing uh, my train of thought. Lord, I need your help, please. We get to this place in our relationship where we're getting in these fights all the time and we keep talking about, you know, okay, here's what I want differently, here's what you want differently. Okay, I'll make these changes. Okay, you make those changes. And we would talk about it, but then nothing would change. We'd be in the same position and we'd get in another fight again. And we just both got to this place where we were like, look, like, we can't do this anymore. Like, let, why don't we take a break? You know, like, we don't have to like officially break up, but like, let's take a break and get away from each other for a bit and make sure that we're in this relationship for the right reasons, not because we're afraid to tear our lives apart and start over. You know, everything over the years, we really like, we intertwined everything, friend groups, um, just everything was like intertwined. It was like, um, so yeah, it was scary, you know, to like think about starting over and all that. Anyways, we decided to take this break. 
I was going to go stay with my sister and her husband. They are Christian. I knew they were Christian. There was something weird about it where, and my sister had actually gotten saved uh, like eight years ago. And like I was saying earlier, she was addicted to meth for a very long time. She tried rehab after rehab after rehab after rehab and nothing ever worked. And then finally, she met a friend who introduced her to Jesus and she opened up her heart to him and he completely changed her life and turned her, saved her life. She almost died so many times. I was starting to come to terms with like, all right, I'm gonna lose my sister and this totally sucks, but it's out of my control. I don't know what to do. There's nothing else I can do. Anyway, she finds Jesus like eight years ago and I never wanted to be a part of Jesus or anything like that. I just felt like I didn't need it and I'm blah, blah, blah. So stubborn. Just I was just so stubborn. I, I didn't even want to hear about it. And, um, but anyways, I was so happy for her, you know, like she was able to get off drugs completely. And it was honestly just a miracle, like a complete miracle. And it's crazy how this miracle literally happens. And I'm still thinking in my head, like, nope, there's no way there's any, any truth to this, you know, like it's all in her head. It's just this placebo thing and blah, 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 whatever. Just like so stubborn. And, and when you don't have Jesus in your life, Satan, the enemy is literally, he's got this veil over your eyes and you think you're seeing clearly you, and you think you're smart. You think you know what you're talking about. You are so wrong. You have no idea. But Satan wants you to be blind. You know, he wants you to have the blindfolds on. And when you think you're on the sidelines, and you're just like, eh, I don't want to be a part of it. Like, that's exactly where he wants you. He wants you right there because you're not a threat to him or anything. But then as soon, you know, as soon as I started like thinking about going to my sister's house, I just started having all these bad thoughts and I was just like angry. It was crazy. I was just like, no, I can't go there. Like, and it's because once you start, you know, moving towards the righteous side and moving towards the light, the enemy's going to do anything in his power to, to blind you from that and keep you from going there because you're becoming a threat. And that's what was happening to me. It was crazy. Anyways, it just got so heavy where I was just like, FaceTiming my mom and sis, and I'm literally just like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Like, what is going on? Like, oh, like, please, I just need you guys to like, please just tell me what to do. Like, I don't even know what to do anymore. I, I'm so lost. I'm so broken. I don't know what to do. And um, my sister's husband, Danny, was just like, dude, Nate, come down here. You know, you don't have to think about anything. We have food. We have a place for you to stay. Like, just come down here. Like you have a good safe place. And so I was just like, okay, like I'll do it. I'm sorry, you know, I'll come down there. Whew, boy, am I glad I did. So we start this break, I drive down, get to my sisters and Danny's. And um, you know, when I get there, I just thought in my mind where I'm just like, you know what? Like, I am gonna look into this Christianity thing. Like, I'm either gonna prove it right or I'm gonna prove it wrong, but I've never given it the time of day. And so now I'm actually gonna look into it and I'm gonna see what kind of, you know, truth there is in this thing. And so I got there, unpacked my stuff, and basically every night, basically 24 seven from there, like I was too emotionally distraught to like work on my business. I was out of my element. I didn't have like my whole computer set up and all that and it was just like, Man, I was just so overwhelmed. It was crazy. And the only thing that was like giving me peace was like looking into this Jesus thing. So I started looking into it. I started asking, you know, my sister and her husband like a million questions about this thing, every question that you can think of. And each question, each, there was an answer for everything. And each time I got that answer, I would just dig deeper. I'd come up with more questions and keep asking people. And then, um, you know, I, I literally, that's all I spent my days doing like 12 hours a day, researching God, researching Jesus, researching all these questions I've always had and never wanted to look into and just avoided and, um, researching, you know, researching other religions and like, how are there all these different religions and what's the truth to this thing? 
you know, I even met with people from her church, got coffee with them, asked them a bunch of questions. I did research online. I watched, you know, tons and tons and tons of YouTube videos. And like, uh, just like I'm filming now, this testimony, like I was watching testimony after testimony, everything that I could find online about like, what are people's experiences with like, coming to Jesus. And like, I was just watching every single one I could find. I was watching near death experience videos where people are saying that, you know, they're experiencing either going to hell and Jesus saves them and pulls them out of this darkness or going, you know, to heaven. And then like, it's not their time. So like they come back with this message and then and, and just this certainty. And like, there were so many similarities with every single video. And I was reading books too. Like I read, uh, more than a carpenter is a great book to read. Uh, that shows just tons of evidence, so much evidence for Jesus. You know, it's hard to believe in this, like, it's just a supernatural thing. It's like, really, could this, could it really be this simple? Like, this is the truth of this life? Like, I just had a hard time believing and wrapping my mind around it. And it's like, I would literally have to change, like, everything in my life, like, all these worldviews. I'd have to, like, turn away from sin. And, and it was just, like, an overwhelming thing. Like, man, if if this is real and I choose this thing, like it's gonna, it's gonna just dramatically change my life. And who knows what'll happen to my business or my dreams or any of that stuff. So it was a scary thing to do, but like it, it was the only thing that was giving me peace at the time. So I just kept looking into it and asking questions. And um, basically I you know, got to this point where there was so much evidence. I weighed out all the other religions, all the other beliefs, and what I found was that there is more evidence for Jesus Christ being the son of God, born from a virgin, living this life, the only perfect sinless human being on planet earth, sacrificing himself, getting killed on the cross and resurrecting three days later. There was more like more evidence for this being like real than anything else that I've ever seen on planet earth. You know, you ask any one of any, anyone who knows me, like growing up, everyone in our like high school class, like standing in a line, they're like, who is the person least likely to ever believe in God or ever believe in any of that? And everyone would have pointed at me. That's who I was. I was just like, no freaking way. Like it's not real. And I'm not going to join this cult, blah, 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 whatever. Oh, anyways, I got to this point where it was just like, there is more evidence for this than anything else. And um, it would literally take more blind faith for me to continue to believe in nothing than it would for me to actually just believe in this. And um, when I got to that point, I kept going back and forth though. Like, no, no, I'm not, I can't do this. Like, I don't want to let go of like all this sin. I, I you know, I, I want to still live life the way that I want to live. And it was just this spiritual battle going on inside, but I couldn't deny the evidence. And I couldn't deny even just thinking about it. Like I could not deny that that was like, that was the one thing that was giving me peace is like, man, if this God is real, like he could really like lift the weight, you know, like this is heavy. And kind of like my whole life, I feel like I, I took pride in like going through all these hard times. And I was just like, yeah, I'm a tough guy and I'm just getting tougher and tougher and tougher and just building that rhino skin and I can get through anything. And, you know, it's just like, I just feel like my life has been a series of challenge after challenge after challenge. And like each challenge had an increase of weight by like 20%. So it's like, okay, I just got through this last one, but now I'm getting this new one, but I'm a little bit stronger from the last challenge. And now I'm going through this next one. And then I make it through that one. And then it's just like each challenge in life got a little bit heavier, a little bit heavier, a little bit heavier, but I just kept moving through it, moving through it, moving through it, getting stronger. But then with this breakup and just like feeling so lost, so overwhelmed, feeling like my life is literally like seemingly falling apart in front of me. And I have I have no like other way to explain besides it was just like, it was such a heavy burden. It, it would, anytime I would try to think about it and figure it out myself, I would just get so overwhelmed. Oh, it would just be this negative spiral and I would just get caught in it. And I would just like freak out. Just like, what is happening? I don't know what I want anymore. Like, what is this? And the only thing that was giving me peace is thinking like, 
man, this God thing, like, maybe, maybe, maybe this could help me. And like, anyways, so I got to this point where it was the only thing giving, giving me peace is, is thinking about that. And there was way more evidence for that than any other, you know, thing that I've ever seen in this entire life. Um, so I decided to take a step, you know, Whew. so that's, that's my story from beginning leading up to, you know, me deciding to take this first step. And that's all it takes. You know, you literally just take the first step, you know, as soon as you start that relationship, God works out the rest. So I decided to take this step. I talked to Allie and Danny, you know, they were telling me that like, there's only one prayer he's going to hear from you until you have the relationship, then it opens up, you know, you can pray to him for anything and he'll hear you, but you don't have a relationship right now. So like, you just need to take that first step. And what it looked like was basically feeling convicted of my sin, knowing that I've done so many wrong things and, and feeling the weight of that and asking for forgiveness and asking, you know, Jesus, if you're there, like, please, please come into my life. And, um, I did that. And that experience was like something I've never felt before. Like I was sitting on the couch and Allie and Danny were supporting me through this. And, and man, it just felt so crazy. Like I was bawling my eyes out, crying so much. Like it was crazy. And I just felt like I was like down, like in this thing, just bawling my eyes out. Like my sister's holding me, Danny's, you know, holding me. And I'm just like crying and just shaking and just like, I don't know. It just felt like I felt the weight of all my sin. And I, and I literally felt like I was just being like, there was so much pressure and weight all around me. And it was crazy. Um, and it almost felt like this spiritual battle. Like I had some demons inside of me and they, and, and like, they didn't want to come out or something like that. Like it, it was just crazy. Afterwards, I was just so emotionally drained, you know, like I think my sis made us some dinner and I went to bed and this was on a Saturday. And, and this was only 10 days after doing my research. You know, I literally just spent 100 plus hours researching this thing, got to a point where I'm like, okay, I'm convinced, like, let's try this. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But as soon as I made that decision, like everything started to change. The next morning though, I, I woke up and it was just a little confusing because I was just like, man, I'm waking up. Why do I feel so angry? I felt so angry when I woke up and this is before church. I, I had either been one or two times with them. And this was like the second or third time that I was going with them. And I was just so like angry. I thought there was going to be some weight lifted or like, I don't know. It was just crazy. And I was just like feeling so angry, but I decided to go to church anyways. And they were actually doing a, um, a baptism that day too. So there was like, you know, like 15 people getting, uh, baptized. They have like a tank of water and like they're dunking people in and all that. And so we went to church, went to the normal service, still felt weird after, wasn't feeling great. And then we stayed for the baptism after and just like hearing more and more and more and more testimonies. Like, uh, it was like 15 different people getting baptized and they'd go up and they'd tell their story and it was super emotional watching it and they'd get dunked and just hearing everyone else's stories, it was like 15 more testimonies to like solidify, like, no, this is like, this could be true, you know? Like, um, it was just so emotional watching all these things. And I, I really think from like that point forward, like I was kind of convinced and, um, oh man, I just felt like, oh gosh, I hope this is real. Like, I really need you, God. Like if you're there and all that, like I need you. Um, since then, whew, it's been four months. I'm making this video. This is like four months after getting, getting saved and, and, you know, um, uh, choosing to believe, um, since then, the only thing that gives me peace, true peace peace that I've never felt before. Like I said, I've tried drugs, alcohol, partying, sex, just every, every sin you can possibly think of. Everything that the world says is pleasurable, that is all just short term, like, it just, it never fills your cup. It never fills it up. It's like you have this hole in your heart and you try to fill it with money and goals and dreams and 
whatever, all the things of this world. And it's like, short term, it's like, yeah, this makes me feel better. But then you always get used to it and get back down to that same level. And I never felt whole. Even though outwardly, it's like, I put on a good show, you know, like I, I, I looked like I was fine and blah, 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 whatever. At, during these last four months, over and over and over, I can't go a day without thinking about God. I can't go a day. It changed everything. When I, over that first week after getting saved, it was like, I had felt something, truly felt like my old heart was like ripped out of me. And a new one was given to me where so quickly, like it literally felt like 50% of my problems went away just like instantly. And the other 50% were like slowly being worked out and they still are being worked out. But just like, it's crazy how quickly everything changed. I started loving and desiring Christian music. Oh, it just gives me so much peace. It's the only thing I listen to now. I love it. It felt like the blinders were removed. It felt like all these years I thought I could see clearly and I couldn't and I was finally given glasses and I was able to look at the world at the way that it is and I'm like holy moly like I've been so blind all these years and I thought I was seeing clearly I thought I was smart I thought I knew what was going on I had no idea I guess the best way to explain it is just like when you feel the love from your creator when you feel that love for the first time, you just feel something that is so beyond powerful that, oh God, I love you so much, Lord. Oh, it is just like, you feel something so amazing and, and it just touches you in a way that like you've never felt before and you've tried everything. Like you've never felt this love before and you finally feel peace for the first time. You've thought you've felt peace, you know, throughout your life. You, What you think peace feels like, there's so much more to it. There is so much more. And the only way to get it is Jesus. Like Jesus is the only answer he is the only answer. I'm telling you, and like we're literally born wanting to turn away from God. It's like our flesh, our flesh just like desires like goals and dreams and ego and pride and like all this stuff. And I'm telling you, you know, even smoking weed, even drinking, like I wanted to stop drinking. I was tired of like waking up hungover and like feeling terrible and then feeling better by the next weekend and then going and drinking again and then feeling terrible again and just like caught in this cycle. Like I always wanted to change that, but, um, I couldn't, I couldn't change these things on my own. I couldn't change my anger issues on my own. I couldn't stop smoking. weed. didn't want to stop smoking weed. It was like, I was trying to, I was trying to be better and I was trying to improve these things myself all these years, but it was so difficult and I could never do it. And I, it, I was just like trapped in this cycle, almost got to a point of just accepting it all. And as soon as I found Jesus, he literally ripped out my old heart, replaced it with a new one. My desires instantly changed. And like, since getting saved, I've literally given up every, every sin you can imagine. And he's still working on me and I'm not perfect yet, but it is crazy. It is a night and day difference. And all these things are happening naturally, like, I hated the Bible, now I love the Bible. Like the Bible is like, oh, I love it so much. It's like all the answers were right in front of me all along. But like, you know, life got tough. I, I hardened my heart and turned away from God. But I did that for so many years and tried everything myself and nothing ever worked. And finally finding Jesus, I'm telling you, it is the only true thing of this life. It is the truest thing. This is not some like psychosis I'm in either. I'm the most logical person that many people know. Like I'm a very logical, factual person. I feel something from this that words just can't explain besides this is the way, the truth and the life. Oh Lord, 
I love you so much. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful and blessed to um, just have God in my life. Like, man, what a difference it has made. Like, I don't even know how I went all these years denying him. Like, I don't know how I went all these years. And like, it, it's just like you just... Satan blinds you. He blinds you and convinces you that, like, you you think you know what you're doing and you're so, so wrong. I thought religion used to just be like, I don't know, like, man, I'm just gonna have, like, I don't want to give up partying. I like smoking weed. It makes me feel better. I don't want to, I don't want to feel bad about doing that or whatever. And it's crazy. You convince yourself, like, you just can't, you just can't see it the way that it truly is. You think that it's all these rules and all this just stuff where you're just like, dude, like, and it's crazy. It's like all my friends, none of them are religious. So I was afraid to take the first step because it's like, man, if this is real, I'm going to lose all my friends. I'm going to lose my girlfriend. I'm going to lose maybe my business. I'm going to lose everything. I was scared. I was so scared and I didn't want to. I didn't want to give all these things up. But as soon as I decided to take that first step, it's just like you're literally given a new heart and your desires change completely. So you're just like, you're almost happy to give it all up. I guess for anyone who's just like trying to figure it out, like, please, please take my advice. Just do it. Just do it. I wish I did this sooner. You know, if the Lord's starting to put this on your heart, like, just take that first step and he will come into your life and he will take care of the rest and just trust him. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess that's it. That's my story. Um, so I, I, I hope this helps.